In a time where some congregations spend more time on Easter eggs than speaking on the resurrection, or in times where we can dedicate way too much energy on debunking the Easter Bunny and Easter and the paganism attached to it, I think it's utterly important for you to remember the resurrection and the meaning of the resurrection. For you see, in Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Do you not realize that when we read Genesis, we're reading about Christ? For in Colossians 1.16, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And when we speak of the resurrection, when we speak of the one that has delivered me and has delivered you, you're speaking about God. There are many who will tell you that Christ began in John 1.1, but that's not possible for Christ was there at creation. John 1.1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So the one that we serve is a God, is an everlasting God, a God that was there at creation. But He was also there at the fall. He was there being merciful to Adam and Eve when they were tempted by Satan and when they fell and he was there to demonstrate grace to them. And in demonstrating that grace in Genesis 3.15, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. God was proclaiming to Satan and his kingdom that he is defeated. And it is utterly important for you to understand the history behind the resurrection so that you can understand the magnitude of what God has done for you. You see, Satan knew that Christ was coming. Satan knew that God was going to be manifest in the flesh. Satan knew. And in Genesis 6:14, there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. So Satan tried to damage the DNA sequence of man. He was trying to avoid Christ from coming forward. But Satan is defeated. Satan and his fallen angels were defeated. And we see that judgment came upon the earth, and Noah was chosen with his family and they came forth. Fast forward some time, and we remember that we just mentioned in John 1, 1 that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, but something amazing happened. You see that Word that it clearly says was God. It doesn't say was a God like the Jehovah Witnesses will tell you. It clearly proclaims that the Word was God. And in John 1.14, something amazing happens to that God. For you see, that God and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory as one of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That Word that was there at creation was now manifested among us. And what an amazing Word! that had become flesh. Christ, Christ who was there at creation, making you man, was now here redeeming you man. The ultimate sacrifice. A God who came down to live and die for you so that you can be saved. There are some cults who will tell you that Christ was an angel that he was Michael the Archangel. That is a lie from the pits of hell. There are groups that will tell you that Christ was just a mere man. Those are lies from the pits of hell. Colossians 2.9 For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. When you saw Christ, you saw God. And as a man, he would weep. But as a God, he will proclaim to Lazarus, come forth, for you see, he is God.
eventually we see the crucifixion. And when that happened, it was God himself who gave himself up for us. Oh, some of us can argue whether it was on a stick or a cross or whether it was on a Friday or a this or a that, but I'm trying to get you to understand the magnitude of the fact that he resurrected. Who did they resurrect? Was it a mere man or was it a God? And I proclaim to you that it was a God, not just any God, but the one true living God. Zechariah 12.10 tells you because Yahweh himself says it. Jehovah says it in Zechariah 12.10, And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications. But look at this. When they pierced Christ, who were they piercing? This is Jehovah speaking. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. God was manifested in the flesh, pierced, spat at, mocked, made fun of, tempted, yet he still remained in holiness for you. And even with that, he still decided not to leave you comfortless. And he said in John 14, 8, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And this is how you can overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Revelation 12, 11, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb because you are not comfortless. God was manifested in the flesh. The resurrection. In Isaiah 45, 24, he is righteousness. And then in the New Testament, in Romans 3, 22, we see that he is righteousness, that Christ is righteousness. In Psalm 81, we see, give ear, O shepherd of Israel. We see that God is the shepherd of Israel. And then in 1 Peter 5, 4, we see that Christ is the chief shepherd. In Daniel 9, 9, we see that to, to the Lord our God belongs mercies and forgiveness. So mercy and forgiveness belongs to God. Yet in Colossians 3, 13, we see that there is one who is forgiving and redeeming people. And his name is Christ. We see in Job 9, 8 which alone spreadeth out the heavens and threadeth upon the waves of the sea. Before Christ walked in Matthew 14, 25, among the sea, he had already done it in Job 9, 8. You don't realize the magnitude of the resurrection until you realize that there was a God who created you and still when you fell was so humble that came and paid the price for your sins. Deuteronomy 6, 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And then in John 10, 30, we see a confirmation. I and the Father are one. A God who came to set the captives free. Isaiah 61, 1, Luke 4, 18. As you leave this video, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believe on in the world, receive up into glory. And Romans 4.25, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification, the resurrection. The wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace, Jesus Christ. Thank you.